working in a theater. You're working in a dining hall in a, in a wonderful building that was built in, in, the, in the late 20s. So you know you're going to come into certain problems that you don't face in a fully fitted theater. Theatrical lighting is added, uh, sound equipment is, is added, there's uh, wires everywhere that are hidden very well so the guests don't see them. There's fire to be dealt with. So from a production standpoint, uh, we have to make that wonderful old hotel into an entirely different animal at that time. And I think that's the most challenging aspect of it, but it's also the most thrilling part. As a stage manager, usually you have a lot of rehearsal time in the room, whereas here, there's no way to really dress rehearse the dinner. And you have to have the food service, you have to have the dining room managers, you have to have the guests, and you have to be in that room at night to have anything look the way it's going to look. Auto follow in three, two, one. My name is Jack Steger, and I'm a lighting technician here at Bracebridge. I work for the Jewish Community Center in San Francisco and master electrician there. I bring in all the lighting for the stage and for the long red carpet. I do the physical load-in of all that equipment and doing the programming on the console as well. The dining room was not dreamed up as being a theater space. We don't have all of the infrastructure that one could necessarily wish for. We've got to take what's available and roll with it. Reed, can you do me a favor and double check that in the little door behind you, all of the appropriate switches are on? I see him. Uh, so a lighting cue is basically a change in state. Our stage manager is in control of the uh, timing and he'll tell me, okay, you know, cue 120, go, that's when I hit the button and from my hitting the button it'll take so many seconds for the lights to change their percentages to become brighter or darker. The big focus design-wise here is brilliance. We create magic, we create Christmas. Uh, so sparkle and brilliance are the words that come into play most often. And using the, using the gear we've got to get the most punch possible, that's the big thing. I've got Clayton beside me every night as fellow spot operator, uh, so he and I work very closely. We're side by side working together. Clayton is an incredible spot op. He knows the show so well. He's been involved with it for so much of his life. And his point of view lets him see things that sometimes I can't. <laughs> Me and Jack's are eyes for Reed a lot. Reed will say, does anybody have eyes on Nick? We need someone, you know, and I'll peer out and look for him and say, oh, he's up there or something, you know. I mean, I can definitely feel when the show's not quite going correctly or something bad happens, like you can definitely feel the tension in the rest of the team. It's like my left ear telling me, something is wrong. It's kind of not real. This window just like, so it's like they're not even out there. I'm just playing a video game. I described it to Reed the other day as, I just hang out up here and play duck hunt with a large flashlight. Now I get kind of bored sometimes. I think that's why headset chatter is pretty funny. You know, everybody has their bored spots where we all sort of comment on what people are saying. Caitlin was talking about just now how the forest folk were very well behaved tonight. But Nathaniel, your forest folk come even now. Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat. Please to put a penny in the old man's hat. My name is Caitlin Nichols, and this is my first year at Bracebridge. I am the assistant stage manager on the mezzanine. I'm the first person everybody sees after they get dressed, or they are a forced folk and they're getting ready. I just kind of stage people, get them ready, and then send them downstairs to the next round of stage Please management. Please to put a penny in the old man's hat. Please to put a penny in the old man's hat. I am a professional stage manager, it's what I do for a living. This is my first show of this nature. Uh, this is so much different than you could ever imagine. God bless you. We hear you brought us a log from the forest, Nathaniel, my friend. Aye, Squire Neville, that we have. People go missing. I will call a section of people they will hit the stairs. So what happens is people peel off because they forget something or they decide they want to go look at that thing over there. 
because the cool thing about Bracebridge is not only do we have this cast, we've got these people called the Force Folk, we've got the DNC employees, the kids of cast members, the kids of rangers, the kids of the park will come in and be Forest Folk, which means they're the peasants, they dress like the peasants, and at some point they come into the show. They're all volunteers, and sometimes they get a little bit excited, and so half of my job is chasing people down. The first part of like the whole, oh my god, I'm actually here for Bracebridge, was getting to the lodge and actually checking at the front desk. We have the print in our house, the original Bracebridge dinner, the Ansel Adams print. Seeing those pieces and then all of a sudden turning around and somebody going, oh, hold on, we found the peacock. And I'm just looking at this thing going, oh, we're actually, we're, we're actually doing this now, okay. Fine feathers make fine birds, I hear. And fine birds in a pie lend themselves to good cheer. Serve the peacock. And I'm guessing it is replete with spicy dressing. But of course. My name is Daryl Tomty, and I have been doing the Bracebridge Dinner my entire life. Uh, my dad's been involved in Bracebridge for 40 plus years. Leaves me doing it my entire life. I am the assistant props master. I'm also the assistant set decorator. I deal with all of the props within the three shows that we do, uh, running around constantly in the house, outside of the house, backstage, front stage, just collecting props, making sure props are in the, the right places, dealing with the gigantic peacock tail, and I have to get that from upstairs to downstairs every night and back up. I played every, pretty much every extra role in the show growing up. Forest folk, servitors, litter bearers. I still play extras every once in a while when someone doesn't show up or something. It's, it's just, it's such a big part of my life. It's, it's, it's such a part of me, it's just, it's who I am. I have the most incredible crew. I mean, I absolutely love the people who are up here doing this with me. As I listen to these people talk the entire time I'm up here anyway, we all get off headset and then go hang out together, so. We're all pretty used to each other. It's a big family. Reed's the dad and Jax is the mom. I'm the prodigal son. 